Hi everyone, it's Bernard, it's Tuesday, it's moviegamenostalgia.com and it's a regular look at, weekly look at a board game. So I'm going back to 1994 today. There you go. What more could you ask for? One of my favourites as a kid. I grew up with this in the 60s, obviously. Um, 32 episodes made into 64 because it was 20 32 50 minute episodes so they split them into into smaller segments i think even even at 50 minutes i remember i was so disappointed as a kid when the thing used to finish i used to really love thunderbirds and obviously following on from fireball xl5 supercar all that sort of thing i mean here in the uk obviously jerry and silver sylvia anderson 1965 66 they all aired between those two years there was a couple of movies as well but here's the game by Peter Pan Playthings. Peter Pan Playthings were established in 1963 in Britain. Um, they actually part became part of the Mattel M A W T E L uh, group eventually in the probably in the 90s, I think, uh, after a couple of takeovers. But uh, hey, 25 years old. It has an older feel to it. This game actually has. A, but what a great! I mean, that's a great, great, cover, great box, isn't it? That's an absolute fantastic, especially for fans of. I mean, even for nostalgia, I could buy, I could buy this just for the box. I wouldn't, I wouldn't particularly need to play the game, to be honest with you. It's just, just one of those things that it's really outstanding, isn't it? Right, the game. Well, this is available on eBay and eBay and various other sites. Uh, you know, they're all, they're all uh, recommended auction sites from your local charity shops. You might be lucky enough to to see it. Usually between ten and thirty pound, depending on time. There's plenty of copies around as well. Uh, Board Game Geek, only getting about five star, five out of ten rating, which isn't great, but it's it's not a bad little game. I mean, it, it probably deserves a little bit more than that. Anyway, if you like what we do, push please push the uh, old subscribe button, push the bell notifications when you know when these reviews are coming out, and obviously into movies and posters and football as well. Obviously, go on Burned in YouTube. Bill. There's like I've got lots of stuff on there. Up to 80 odd videos I've put out now. So there's plenty to go, plenty to go at. Right, let's shall we have a look at this one then? Shall we have a look at what we get for our for our money? You know, you've been lucky enough to pick it up fairly cheaply from a charity shop. You know, great little board. Uh nice colours, nice solid board as well. Uh not too many plain squares. This is Tracy Island in the middle. You've got space over here. There's there's Thunderbird 5. You got the city area, you got the marine underwater area here, and you got the desert area here. So that's all, all your layouts. And there's your Tracy Island. There's your launch site for Thunderbird One, Thunderbird Two, Thunderbird Three, which obviously into space. I mean, space is over there. So you know, but obviously it's uh, makes you work a little bit hard to get to your targets, doesn't it? And obviously, for Thunderbird Four, launches straight into the water area. This is all, this is all the water area. Maybe maybe significant problems in the game when you pick certain cards up later, where depending on what area of your board you're in, space, city, water, or the desert, uh, you may be restricted from doing things or have to do certain things in the game. So anyway, we've got Tracy Island, little little trait. There's Tracy Island. So obviously, you would line up each of the characters. Obviously, with the whichever Thunderbird they're responsible for, Scott Thunderbird one, etc. So you do that for the sake of playing the game. I'm not going to keep this, but obviously it'll sit there in the middle for the sake of playing the game. I'm not going to keep it on the board because it will it'll get in the way. To be honest with you, while I'm doing things, so I'll keep it to one side. So very simple slotting together, Tracy. Yeah, nothing, nothing fantastic there is there from the point of view of things. But again, quite solid, nice, good condition. Right, what else do we get? We get we also have to have a nasty, don't we? We always have to have a nasty. So we've got Hood. We've got Hood's Temple here. There's a little spot for Hood's Temple over here. So you've got to have your nasty in the game. And obviously you've got your Hood's Temple counter. That slots on there to begin with, but obviously that's then going to come into play when we play the game. Uh, we've got little sections, little collection points, little holes in there for each of the different areas. So you've got one for your space in the corner there, one for your city in that corner there, one for your marine area, water area over there, 
and one for your desert area there. So even though the Hud's Temple is in the desert, you can, there's still challenges and missions where you have to go and collect stuff in the desert. You've got incident cards, which basically lots of different incident cards. There's only five different types of things can happen on the incident card, but I'll uh, I'll go through. So I've got the five cards there. I'll go through them in a bit with you. So they're all instant, which you shuffle and place anywhere around the board. And you, you have access to an instant card when you land on one of these blue international rescue squares. So that's when the instant card will come into play. It can be a good thing. It can be a bad thing. So you'll find out later. And it can up to four players. So each each of the four players has got Thunderbird 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, sadly, there's no Thunderbird 5, obviously. He's sat over here. But there's no, there's no playing piece for Thunderbird 5. But if you look at the pieces, there's Thunderbird 1. And it has a little slot in it. The little slot is for things you have to collect. So it has one little slot in Thunderbird 1. So I'm playing with the yellow and the blue there for Thunderbird 1. You can have them lay down like that. You can have them stood up. When they're stood up and you put the little pegs in later, they, they can be a bit wobbly. So you can lay them down or stand them up. It's entirely up to you. That's Thunderbird 1. Of course, you've then got Thunderbird 2. Look at that. They have two little holes. For, so they can actually carry more for you. So it's the workhorse, isn't it, Thunderbird 2? So that's your Thunderbird 2s. Thunderbird 3, obviously the old guy that can go into space has his little hole again to, so you can put the uh, pegs in. Thunderbird 3. And not to scale, obviously it'd be a lot smaller in real life, but obviously you've got Thunderbird 4, which obviously is a similar size to the others, obviously you can see. It's not to scale, obviously. The others are quite to scale, aren't they, if you think about it, but Thunderbird 4, obviously within the constraints of the game. Obviously, you couldn't you could have it to scale. I mean, they are fiddly to play with now, aren't they, when I picked them up? So they would be even even fiddlier. This isn't the dice for it. This is, I've got the white dice upstairs. I just didn't bring that down. So this is a, just a normal six-sided dice with the game, nothing, nothing special. And you have a number of pegs in the colours that you're going to play. So you'll have yellow and blue pegs. I'm only playing a two-player game here. You can play up to four players, obviously. So they have little pegs. These little pegs, see, they've got a little thing in that. That'll actually fit into the hole, into the Thunderbird. So, and that's why if you put that in there, it might make it a bit unbalanced. Let's see if it stands up anyway. Let's stick that in there. Let's see if it does. Yeah, see, it stands up okay. So you can you can do that. That's no problem. Anyway, they're the, they're the things that the aim of the game is, is to collect those little pegs, which can be an item of equipment. It can be a person, etc. So... Obviously, to play the game, you need a mission. And what we've got, so we've got a number of missions, all requiring different things. So some you'll require to collect more equipment, some you'll require to, to collect more people, etc. Obviously, the less, the less there is to collect, the, the quicker the game, in theory, should be. So you get 16 missions. You do encourage you, once you've played the game, to do your own missions or go onto the television, watch, watch the programmes and find out their missions, because a lot of those missions are very are very tied in with the uh, TV series. So they do encourage you to go on the TV series and, and watch the things and create your own missions as well. You can make missions once you've got used to this. Once you've played 16 missions, you, you'll know the game. You can actually have players playing different, you know, if you've got four players, you can all be doing a different mission each, but as long as there's so many, you know, they all have to have challenges. So as long as there's one, two, three, like there's a... Um, Obviously, for each one, Path of Destruction, you need seven pegs to collect. So each player would have to have a, get a mission where there were seven pegs to collect, so unless you've got younger players, and perhaps give them a, a, bit, a little bit less to do because it is from four years old. So, hey, that, you know, give them a better chance of winning, won't it? To play the game, I, I must basically talk through one of them. They give you a sample mission. The game rules, quite simple game rules. There's only, it's only four pages, the game rules. And there's even a game for younger players there you can play as well that they could play on their own perhaps if it gets too complicated. But once you've played this, it's not going to be too bad, is it? So the mission, let's say the sample mission. Let's say two scientists are trapped beneath the ocean in a diving bell. So we've got the ocean. So two scientists. So what you do, obviously there's two players playing. You would take these pegs. So there's two scientists. 
So that's one scientist, yellow and blue. And two scientists, yellow and blue. So you have to collect both of those. And obviously get them back to Tracy Island. So that's where these, you won't get any more holes and pegs. So obviously that's that's the whole idea. So that's two scientists are trapped beneath the ocean. So you've got to pick two, two scientists up for the yellow, two scientists up for the blue. You only pick your own up, obviously. You don't, you don't first get there to get, you know, that might be another rule change you want to do yourselves. But obviously you just pick your own scientists up. The two scientists trapped beneath the ocean in the diving bell. Time is running out as their oxygen supply is used up. Their position can only be determined by the monitor board, Thunderbird 5, in outer space. So to find the scientists, obviously Thunderbird 5 is going to come into play. Unfortunately, because you know what Brains is like, he's a very clever guy, but these things are always breaking down. Unfortunately, all communication with Thunderbird 5 is non-functional. The component for its repair must be picked up from the city. So there we have the city at the moment. There's nothing to pick up, is there? So there's one component for each player to pick up from the city. So again, you just slot the corresponding colour into there. So you put one yellow and one blue. So to play the game, obviously, you can't complete your mission. You can't go and pick these scientists up until you pick up this communication equipment for uh, Thunderbird 5. The component for its repair must be picked up from the city and taken to Thunderbird 5 in the custody of its inventor, Dr. Hiram Hiram, who can make the repair. So there you go. You place your two, two scientists in each of those. So they say send Thunderbird 1 or Thunderbird 2 to the city and pick up Dr. Hiram Hiram. So it's saying that because Thunderbird 1, when it moves, is quicker than Thunderbird 2, as we all know. So if you throw a three, for instance, on Thunderbird 1, you can move him six. So that's great. So obviously to get these, this, uh, the, the scientists to fix Thunderbird 5, it's obviously a lot quicker if you use Thunderbird 1. So you launch Thunderbird 1 and then move him over there to get these, these scientists. And these scientists have obviously then got to be transported over to Thunderbird 5. Now, the only problem with that is obviously Thunderbird 1 won't, can't go into space, can he? So during the game, you're going to have to bring out Thunderbird 3 at some stage. These two have to be on the same square. So if Thunderbird 1's got your, got your guy there to sort the malfunction out, Thunderbird 1's there on his way, he will have to meet Thunderbird 3 to transfer the item to Thunderbird 3, who is the only one who can fly into space. So there's your space section. Thunderbird 1 obviously can't. Now, some people say, obviously, there's a, there's a thing. Does it mean Thunderbird 1 can't enter any of this space section? And I, you can play that way, or you can play it just can't enter this section here. So it's entire, the, the rules are, are not specific, so it's up to you how you do it. Same for the water. Obviously, Thunderbird 1 can't go into the water thing in theory. But obviously, if you just class those spots as the water, those spots as the desert, each one. Can only do that obviously thunderbird one can't fly into space thunderbird one can't go in the water obviously thunderbird two can't fly into space thunderbird two can't fly in the water thunderbird three can only go into space and thunderbird four can only go into the water so you may have two or three of you of your items out playing the game but obviously they are restricted as to where they can go so to complete your mission you've obviously got to go and pick the scientists up Thunderbird 1, transfer him over to Thunderbird 3, and Thunderbird 3 has to then drop him off at, five, at, at number at um, Thunderbird 5. Once you've done that, that's the only thing you can then think about rescuing the poor buggers in the uh, under stuck under the water. So again, perhaps Thunderbird 1, who obviously moves quicker, you can get over there waiting. Because let's face it, you're going to need Thunderbird 4. So you're going to need Thunderbird 4 to go in the water. Thunderbird 4 can collect these signs. You don't have to have the exact throw. Once you get a throw, if you throw a 6 there, obviously that's enough. to. But you don't have to have an exact 1, 2, 3 to get the things. He'll pick that up. He can pick up one of the scientists from the diving bell that's stranded. Don't forget you've, you've fixed the communications. He can then come out, meet Thunderbird 1, somewhere obviously not in the water you can actually go and meet him but you do have to land on the same square so to transfer that item 
to Thunderbird one, you know, and obviously you can go back then to Tracy Island, back to his launch pad, and actually the first one to complete the ice, first one to get the communication, the first one to get the two scientists, obviously, is going to win the game. So it looks, looks quite simple, doesn't it? The only the only sort of problem with this is this guy, the hood. Well, two problems really. You need a six to launch your items. You need a six to launch any of your any of your um, Thunderbirds. Now, some people on Board Game Geek have said that can be a bit of a pain. So don't do it. Don't don't do it if you don't like it. Don't do it. But obviously, just have the six as you get, say, a bonus throw or something like that. If you throw a six, but before you move an item, say you've got all, say you've got all three out here. Say you've got Thunderbird four. Thunderbird 2, Thunderbird 1. Before you throw the dice, you have to say who you're going to move. So obviously, if you, he can only move. He can't move out of the water, Thunderbird 4. So you're going to have to say, yeah, I'll, I'll throw my dice to Thunderbird 4. If you throw a, throw a 1, obviously, that's all right. He's on the edge there. But, hey, this is where the problem comes in. So you have to you have to actually tell people which... Which Thunderbird you're moving before before you throw, not after, so you can't cheat. Perhaps if you've got a younger player, you let them cheat a little. You let them move after. Again, that's a way for you to develop the game. But what you're doing, if you end up on this square, if you look at the HUD's head, you've got number one, six, four, two, five, and three. So one, two, three, four, five, six. After everyone's played the to had the go, someone throws for the hood. So depending on what number you throw for the hood, if you throw number four, you would put the, the hood counter onto the number four. Now, if you're unlucky enough to be sat on number four and he lands on you, if you're carrying an item, he'll steal your he'll steal your item out of your hole and put it in his temple, which means he then part of your game is having to get back and get the get to the hood's temple and take your item back. But obviously, then you also have to go back to Tracy Island. So after everyone's had the goal, the hood has his throw, and the hood's the hood's the guy who can absolutely make a mess of everything. Obviously, by landing on your spot. If he lands next, if you're next to the hood, that means you miss a goal and you can't move. See these little squiggles? That means his mind hypnosis has trapped you. So if you're on that square, you can't move until this hood counter moves. So you can't move that playing piece. So he's the he's a trouble cause. You may have to end up going over to his temple to get stuff back, etc. Uh, the incident cards. If you land on the incident cards, as I said they, they can be good and bad things. Obviously, we've got brain saves a day, so that's a good card. You would pick that up and keep it until you use it. Then you put put it back at the back of the pile because something may happen where you need brains help. The other good card you've got is Lady Penelope thwarts a hood. So obviously, if he does land on you and you're on one of these hood spots, you can play your Lady Penelope card and obviously the hood would obviously would they able to be able to move or you would able not to have to go back to base and lose your item so you can play that card and again it will go back to the bottom of the pile you've got dodgy cards you've got things that can happen so you've got a potential disaster so if you pick that up a giant radioactive cloud is floating over the desert if you look at the desert desert area that's the desert quadrant there that quarter any craft in the area must land and wait a turn before proceeding, unless you have radiation shields in the form of brain saves a day. So, yeah, you can miss a goal if you like, if you're in that area and you get that card, the potential disaster area. And unless you've got a brains card, you can play that and you're okay to move, otherwise, you'd miss a turn. So, that's a potential disaster. There's a few of those with different things, and obviously, you've got the malfunction card. And again, there's some some of these in the incident card, you know, there's a batch of incident cards with malfunctions, various malfunctions. You require a vital piece of equipment, which is back on Tracy Island. Uh, your craft must return there immediately. So it, whichever craft landed on that and picked up the malfunction car, will then have to go back to trade to your launch spot on Tracy Island. So again, causing delays to the to the thing. And there is a good another good thing to happen. You get an FAB card. So Brains is trying out a new circuit board on Thunderbird 2. Add one to every throw for this mission. So you keep that, and every time you throw, you add one to the score. So you get a six, you move seven, Thunderbird two. And they say, don't forget Thunderbird one, you can move twice as quick. So there you go. I mean, that, that's the basic game. I mean, it, it's quite simple, isn't it? It's not too complicated. Some of the missions are far more complicated. Some of the missions, you, you're either picking up six or seven items of equipment and scientists in one go. So the, the more to do, the longer the mission, obviously. And you've got the old trouble cause of the... 
the hood causing uh, causing your problems. Uh, it's only four players. I don't think you can really get away with more than four players, uh, to be honest with you. As I say, there, there is an actual gameplay for younger children if they want to play on their own. But I think once, once they know the game and they understand that they have to allocate which Thunderbird is moving before they throw the dice, before, and obviously, as I said, if you want to adapt it so the younger players can pick who they move after they've thrown the dice. That might be a good idea. You know, give them a chance against the older players because there's a little bit of strategy. There's a lot of bit. It's roll and move game, which obviously there's a lot of luck involved. Uh, you want to try to avoid being on the hood squares or next to the hood squares. But, hey, if you're brave, you just take the chance of being near one or on one. And sometimes you've got no option, have you? If, you, if you're having to move your item after, you know, the dice roll, then obviously you've got no, op uh, no option, have you? If, you've got, if you get a if you sat on that square there, I mean, the benefit is obviously you can move any direction. So if you do get a four, one, two, three, four, you don't have to move on to hood there, do you? If you get a four, you can go one, two, three, four, you can move on to there, so you're quite safe, so the hood's not going to get you. So there's a bit of strategy, a bit of luck. Pieces are nice, aren't they? I do like the pieces. As you can see, it's nothing nothing overly complicated. It's just a nice, simple game. And if you love Thunderbirds, if you love, I'd buy it for the box, as I said. I mean, I love Thunderbirds anyway. And I think it's good. That's good fun. It's not going to be a, play, a game you're going to play time and time again, obviously. But, uh, no, I'm, I'm quite impressed with that. I think it's simple enough without being too complicated where you can get a lot of younger players. And obviously, we had the revamp of Thunderbirds, didn't we? We had the modernisation of Thunderbirds. So there'll be a lot of... Uh, kids out there who are into Thunderbirds now so nah, I think that's a great little game say so between you can pick it up for as cheap as a 10 and I think I've got it on site at about 20 quid at the moment obviously I buy these things and they go up and down with the time of year with Christmas approach you tend to find prices going up a little bit but I've got this on movie game nostalgia.com anyway so no, oh, you enjoyed that anyway um simple game ni nice little pieces great little I had all these I had the models of these when I was a kid I had uh I think he had them all. The only one I didn't have was Thunderbird 4. The only one, the only one I didn't have, I think, as a kid was Thunderbird 4. But I may have, I may have, I think Dinky Toys may have done the Thunderbird 4. So I may have had that. But obviously with the others, I had mechanical ones. I had a Thunderbird 5 that used to have flashing lights. And it was probably, I mean, looked big to me when I was a kid. But it was probably only about that big. But it was, it was amazing. And it moved. It moved in a little circle. I had flashing lights on it. Thunderbird 5. And I had obviously, obviously Thunderbird 1 and 3. Uh, Thunderbird 2 as well in various sizes. I didn't just have, I don't know, you know I probably had different different uh, scale sizes of these items as well as a kid. So, yeah, great, great, mem great memories, obviously, with Thunderbirds for me, for me personally as well. And there's a lot of great new memories because, as I said, there's modern versions of it, isn't there? So there's a good lot of, a lot of versions. I'm sure a lot of kids have gone what, watched the puppet ones and wondered what all the fuss was about and had a laugh. But I hope they like it. I mean, I liked it, you know, Thunder. This puppet marination thing was super, was it? Anyway, thanks for watching. Give us a follow on Twitter at Nostalgia underscore Movie. Yeah, I'm on YouTube with Bird the Name with all these uh, board game reviews, video, uh, video, video, DVD reviews, uh, poster reviews, uh, and obviously Manchester City orientated stuff. If you're into your football and history, etc., and Manchester City vlogs are on Bird the Name YouTube with all these. So. Have a, have a watch of those. A lot, a lot of them. Obviously, go back and watch some of my other board game reviews. Some great stuff. Some great stuff already on there over the last 13, 14 weeks. Um, so, if you visit my website, moviegamenostalgia.com, for DVDs, posters, and obviously all these board games. So, have a, have a look on there. You don't have to buy. There's anything on there you, you you can't spot? Give us a shout. I might be able to to get hold of it. It might be temporary. Like I said, there are some more Thunderbird games. On. I'm out of stock at the moment, but I will be getting back in stock. So I'll just have a look on the site and see what you think. Um, so that'll be great. And you know, I'll just have a look around. And if you haven't got it, just let me know. I'll try and get it for you. I'll tell you where you can get it from, someone reliable. Because if you buy these things on the online sites, be careful you get the complete items. There's always bits and bits. And this is a game where it's nice to have all the pieces, isn't it? And you can, you can pick the spares up, but... Um, it's nice to have a complete one. So just read the descriptions because sometimes they put complete in the heading, Thunderbirds game complete, and then you read in the description complete apart from. So it's not complete, is it? But hey, there you go. <laughs> so be careful when you're buying online, obviously. And if you go into a charity shop, I said open the box up, have a look, have a look in the charity shop, have a look, have a look for the item. Don't be frightened of you know, only you're obviously only paying two or three pounds, but hey, 
you know, it's, it's a shame if there's a lot of parts missing. There's one or two you can buy the spares, but there's, you know, it is a shame. And I'm not afraid. I buy a lot of sealed. I prefer sealed items, obviously, the factory sealed items for games, obviously. But uh, I do take a chance occasionally if it's a game I'm after and I open it up. And as long as there's not too many bits to look through, great. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. I uh, hope you buy that and play it. You know, Christmas is coming up. And I'll see you all very, very soon. Oh, don't you, whatever you're going to do with the rest of your day, have a great one. Look after yourself. Look after your family. Look after your friends. And I'll see you all again very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.